Hey, what's up everyone? Pete the Guttural Monk here. Today I'm going to share with you guys my top 15 favorite death metal album covers. Um, I was definitely inspired to do this video by Mike Seatown and Scourge of Vinyl. Both of those guys posted awesome videos yesterday about a similar topic, although their selections were a little bit more broad, and I'm kind of focusing in just on death metal for now. This is something that I've wanted to do for a while, uh, and it's kind of cool to kind of get that spark, that inspiration from those two guys. So, cheers. I'm going to link their videos in the description. Make sure you guys check that out. Um, yeah, these are in just alphabetical order. It was really simple to kind of pick out these albums for me. I told myself I'm going to pick 25 and then kind of just narrow it down from there. Um, but I knew really right where I was going. So, first up, this is Tales from the Thousand Lakes by Amorphous. Uh, this album originally came out in 1994. Uh, the cover painting was handled by S.V. Bell. Uh, this dude was responsible for albums from uh, Cataclysm, uh, Mortis Gold. He did Die Mighty Contract from Rotting Christ. Uh, Wombat's uh, Internal Caustic Torment. This dude's got a huge portfolio of awesome album covers that he was responsible for. It just looks so magical, so mystical, really thought-provoking album cover. I love the way the logo sits, and definitely one of my favorites of all time for good reason. Next one up, this is Through the Cervix of Hawa by Antediluvian. Um, this album cover fucking gripped me from the first time I saw it. I think it's absolutely disgusting and dripping and super mysterious and just it makes you want to know more about the music held inside. The, that's technically the band's logo, like it's just a really fucking cool, um, well-designed album cover. Um, and I just think it's, it's super fucking evil and disgusting and it truly mimics the sound of the album. So next one up, this is uh, not only one of my favorite albums of all time, but definitely one of my favorite album covers of all time also. Um, Autopsy, Mental Funeral. Uh, this was done by a dude named Kev Walker. Uh, this was uh, originally out in 1991. Um, Kev Walker, he's responsible for um, a lot of the early Magic the Gathering stuff, uh, as well as Bolt Thrower's Realm of Chaos. You might recognize his work there. Uh, but this album cover truly mimics the sound of Mental Funeral. Um, it, it sounds like that fucking creature could be the one playing those sticky, disgusting drums. Um, the way the logo just kind of drips onto it, it looks like it's all just like, the piece has movement, which is super cool. And it truly looks like the album sounds. Um, fucking love this piece. So next one up is from a band that I've definitely mentioned on this channel before. This one is from Caducity. This is the Willy and Wielder Quest. Uh, Caducity was a death metal band out of Belgium. This is their first full length. Um, the, the image was basically just ripped from some kind of medical text. It's just a diagram of the human heart. Uh, but it is so fucking intricate. And it, surprisingly, it fits the music here so, so well. Um, it really works as a death metal album cover. Um, you could even say like a guy like Dan Seagrave could have done something like this. Super detailed, super technical. Um, I, I love the artwork to this album. Always thought it fit so well. So next up, no surprise, there was going to be some Cannibal Corpse on this list. Um, Butchered at Birth, my favorite Cannibal Corpse album cover, um, handled by Vince Locke, of course. It sucks you in instantly into thinking that whatever sounds are recorded on this disc um, are going to be just as ugly as the uh, the album cover portrays it to be. Um, the fucking hanging babies, this dude's sadistic eyes, I mean, it's just, it, it's fucking horrifying, and it's one of my favorite pieces of artwork of all time. Next one up, this is Engulfed in Desolation by Cruciamentum. Uh, this album came out in 2011. Uh, artwork was handled by Daniel Desecrator. Uh, and actually, when this one jumped out at me, I was like, this is kind of a tie. Uh, so I have to give at least an honorable mention to uh, Dismas Towards the Megalith. Um, seeing just the, the shades of green in the Cruciamentum album cover uh, and that kind of megalithic structure, temple, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be. Um, it, it kind of reminded me a lot of Dizma and how much I love this piece by uh, Ola Larson. Um, really fucking two awesome album covers, but uh, yeah, nod for uh, the one making my list is uh, Crucimentum, Engulfed in Desolation. Next one up, another one of my favorites, uh, this is None So Vile from Cryptopsy. I love when a, you know, old painting, 1600s, um, is repurposed onto an album cover. This fucking album cover uh, is absolutely iconic in my opinion. Actually, uh, I wrote down the name of the painter. This is Elizabeth Serrani. Uh, name of the painting is Herodias with the head of John the Baptist. Uh, really fucking cool if you want to look that up on its own, check it out without the logos on it, but uh, yeah, None So Vile definitely jumped out at me as one of the ones that I had to include on this list. It, it's brutal, it's haunting, she has no kind of expression on her face, and just the head of John the Baptist, really fucking badass. Next one is Funebrae with Children of the Scorn. Um, 
fucking A, man. Like, th this album cover instantly fucking gripped me the first time I saw it. Um, I love the way old school Finnish death metal albums, they have this kind of like webbing, this like smoke shit that's everywhere. Uh, you can even see, you know, the, the newer interpretation of this on the reissue side really puts you in a weird spot because you don't know if this is on Earth. You don't even know. I mean, are these people made of stone? Are they holding some kind of a coffin? Um, it's definitely thought-provoking. It definitely has the overall feel of the album. The, the waterfall hitting the water and then kind of almost having like a red hue come up from it. Um, the red sky, it's just super ominous. One of my favorite death metal album covers, without a doubt. Next one up, no surprise, Here and After from Immolation. Uh, the tortured demons, uh, the almost victorious looking angel character. Um, I love the emotion that it fucking gives off. Fits the music really, really well. Um, and this was handled by Andreas Marshall. This dude was responsible for um, all the 90s Blind Guardian stuff, all the 90s Hammerfall stuff. Fantastic artist. So from Immolation's catalog, uh, aside from this album, he was also responsible for Dawn of Possession, uh, Failures for Gods, Close to a World Below, Unholy Cult. Um, he's been working with Immolation for a very long time. Fucking awesome looking piece. Next one up just came out a couple months ago. Uh, this is Lantern with two Morphosis. Um, this fucking album cover is, uh, is without a doubt the most intricate thing I think I've ever fucking stared at. Um, this was handled by a absolutely fantastic Polish artist who, unfortunately, I, I just can't pronounce his name, so I'm going to try to put it on the screen like right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, Google this dude, check out his other work. Uh, he was responsible for The Satanist, uh, he was responsible for uh, uh, the self-titled Apsu album, uh, the most recent and last few actually Destroyer 666 albums, um, as well as Ghost, Vader, and some Watain. So I mean, this dude, he's on some high profile shit. This shit gets me excited to listen to the music. Album covers are basically track one, and track one on this album fucking rules. So next up from the now defunct Swedish band uh, Morbus Crone, this is Sleepers in the Rift, handled by Raul Gonzalez. Um, this album cover is fucking awesome. Uh, it looks like that thing is just alive, it's breathing, it's pulsing, uh, it's part landscape, it's part fucking mutant. Uh, Raul Gonzalez, uh, he's worked with Horrendous, he's worked with Ataraxy, he's worked with Sarcasm, um, a lot of Dark Descent titles, uh, check him out. Definitely will have a link in the description, uh, but yeah, Sleepers in the Rift takes it for uh, my favorite Raul Gonzalez piece, and it lands itself on this list for sure. Next up, this list would not be complete without something from Dan Seagrave. Uh, this is Nocturnus with the key. Talk about fucking detailed and just intricate art. So you should be no stranger to Dan Seagrave. Uh, he's worked with Carnage, Decrepit Birth, Entombed, Gore Guts, Malevolent Creation, Morbid Angel, fucking Suffocation. I mean, this guy's done it all. Uh, you've seen his artwork a hundred times. Uh, the key is the one that I picked because it is just so fucking cool. I've stared at this cover for hours and uh, you still always find something new. Super busy, but still like super sleek. Um, yeah, nothing else I can say about it. Dan Seagrave, Nocturnus, the key. Next up is another one I can stare at for hours. Uh, obituary, Cause of Death. Uh, this was handled by uh, Michael Whelan. Um, he did some Sirith Ungol album covers. Um, as well as uh, Sepultura's Arise, which I'll get to a little bit later in the list. Um, one of my favorites, just so busy, so dark, so evil, fucking pile of skulls, um, some kind of weird, you know, protruding ribs from the ground, and obviously the uh, sinister eyeball just kind of hanging in the sky. Um, really fucking cool stuff. I think the artwork is, uh, is noteworthy enough to mention in a list like this. Um, fucking classic album, classic piece of artwork. Next one up for me is uh, Opeth with My Arms, Your Hearse. So simplistic, just kind of drenched in shadows. This ominous figure that you don't really know if it's your mind playing tricks on you, or if it's actually like a cloaked woman um, seemingly on like the edge of like a lake or a river or something like that. Um, another one, the way the logo just kind of hangs there, um, the album itself mimics this sound, um, this kind of like purple haze hanging in the air, uh, totally mimics the feel of uh, a lot of the, the, the softer moments of this album. Just a really well composed and kind of, again, keeping the air of mystery um, and just darkness. One of my favorites of all time. Last up for me, uh, this is another one from Michael Whelan. Uh, this is a rise from Sepultura, fucking creepy crab monster. Um, always thought this was really cool for some reason, just happened to be the last one on the list. Um, but I also picked it because, you know, it's oddly comparable to Blasphemy Made Flesh by Cryptopsy, and this album didn't come out uh, for a couple years after a rise, uh, but same kind of concept, weird, spindly, crab-like creature. Really fucking 
weird album cover, uh, but one of my favorites. Uh, and that's actually all I got for this video. If you guys liked it, definitely comment below. Um, I would love to do one on black metal and just other random, you know, genres. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Cheers, guys.